What the heck is histogram? Hey there, this is Unmesh and if you're watching this video, by now you might have heard about the word histogram. Maybe you read it in a magazine, maybe you read it in a book, maybe a photography professor told you, maybe you watched a YouTube video about it. Some of you might even know how to use a histogram, what exactly is a histogram, but somewhere something is missing. You're not clear as to what those graphs represent, what those pixels are, what that range is. But let me tell you something, in this video, Let's understand this once and for all so that you will never have to look it up in future. Also, I guarantee you that by the end of the video, if somebody asks you, what's histogram? You will be like, hey, hold my beer or drink. By the way, I don't drink. So without any further ado, let's get started. Let's hit it. You are very intelligent. I'm not judging you, but here's the thing, I have a small request. Can you please pretend for the next 10 minutes or so that you know nothing about computers, you know nothing about Photoshop, Lightroom, Adobe, digital imaging, nothing. It's a complete blank brain. And if your mother jumps in and asks, what is Photoshop, my dear? You should respond like, Photoshop? What are you talking about? So, I just want to make sure that we start from scratch, okay? So let's begin. Now before we dig into what exactly histogram is, we need to understand what exactly a pixel is because it forms an essential part of the histogram. It is the histogram, okay? It's the heart of the histogram. So what is a pixel? Well, think of it this way. What am I? What are you? What is this mic? What is this laptop? These are all matter, right? And if you have studied elementary science, I'm assuming you have, you might know that matter is made up of molecules and molecules are made up of atoms and atoms, though still debatable, atoms are the smallest items that a matter can be broken into. Similarly, pixel is the smallest item that a digital image can be broken into. Think of pixels like the bricks. Each pixel is one brick and together bricks can form houses they can form buildings, they can form walls. So that's that. Let us see what exactly a pixel is. Have a look at this image. Now this image does look seamless, but watch what happens when I zoom in. Okay, you might have seen it before, but let me just reiterate. So when I zoom in, you begin to see these boxes and each box is nothing but a pixels. And these pixels combine together to form the image. Now, each pixel, let me zoom out, each pixel has two kinds of information, two sets of data. And what are those data? Well, one data is the location of the pixel and the other data is the color. Let me show that to you as well. If I go to Windows and open Info, look, an info box appears. And as I move my mouse, watch these values, X, Y, R, G, B, just watch these values, these values change. Now what do these values mean? These are nothing but location and color. A pixel just has that information, location and color. Let me make it more clear to you. If I zoom in straight dead zoomed near the edges, let me show you, okay? Pixel zoom and I hover my mouse over here in the first row of pixel or the first column of pixels. It shows me x equals zero. See? x equals zero. This means that its location is in the first column, right? Clear? And look at the y. It shows me 668. It means it's at the 668th row from the top. So if I move uh, the mouse towards the top, see the value of y decreases? And if I move the mouse towards downwards, downwards, I'm sorry, my grammar is very weak. If I move it downwards, the value of y increases. Why? Because zero is at the top and at the bottom, depending upon the number of pixel, are the values. So it's showing you just the values. Now look at the RGB. As I hover my mouse, the value of RGB changes. This means that this pixel has 166 red, 181 green and 224 blue. You can also term it as 33% cyan, okay? 24% uh, magenta, 0% uh, yellow, K is black. So, so the color is also being represented. 
I think you might be clear by now what exactly a pixel is. Now let's move on to the real juice of what histogram is. A histogram is simply a graph that shows you how many bright pixels are there, how many dark pixels are there, so on and so forth. We'll get to that in a minute. But here's the thing. Any image has a fixed number of pixels. Some of the pixels are bright, some of the pixels are dark, some are black, and some are in the middle. And histogram is just a representation of that. Now if you look at the diagram, I just made the diagram for you. On the x-axis, we have the brightness level. On the y-axis, we have the number of pixels. So as you can see on the x-axis, we have shadows, mid-tones and highlights. Simply it means darker areas, mid areas and bright areas. And on the y-axis, we have the number of pixels. How many pixels of the image are in the dark area? How many are in the middle area? How many are in the bright area as you can see? Now, I also have some samples for you, so let's get to it to understand better, okay? And if this doesn't make sense, just hold on, stay patient, I guarantee you'll get it. It's simple, let's get to it. Now, let's look at our first example. I have my images will appear here, okay? Look at this image. Suppose this is an image and let's open the grids. And this image is comprised of 100 pixels. Now, it's nothing but a simple gray block. It's full of what? Midtones. It's not bright enough. It's not dark enough. Full of midtones. So how will the graph look like? Graph will look like this. The whole image has nothing but midtones. So shadow zero, midtones four, and highlights zero. Now let's move on to image number two. I just tried to draw a. Okay, okay. Let's move on to image number two. I just tried to draw a dog with just 100 pixels. I know I suck at drawing, but that's what I could do. Guess what the graph would look like? Okay, let's turn on the second graph. And here we go. Okay, let's do that. Look in the second graph. From the first graph, let's compare the set. This was the first graph, and this is the second graph. As you can see, since there are black pixels also, pixels of shadows, so shadows has increased. And since we have white pixels, but not that much, just two, so highlights are also there. And the midtones has decreased a little bit. Now here's the thing. If one bar will increase, the other has to decrease. And that is why the area of the graph of any histogram will always be the same. Why? Because the number of pixels in an image is always fixed. Matter is never lost nor conserved. I don't know if that statement is right. Okay, anyway, move on. Just forget that I said it. Okay. Now let's move on to the uh, third image. And uh, the third image is something uh, really interesting. And this is a car. And let's open the third graph. All right. And this time, the pixels of blacks have increased. So, as usual, as we would expect, see the shadows graph? It has gone up. And the white is also a considerable number and the midtones has gone down. Why? Because just a few midtone pixels are there. Now let's move on to the third one, the fourth one. I'm so sorry. And okay. Now fourth is just a black box. And as you expected, just the shadows. And similarly, the fifth is just a white box. Okay, I didn't turn it on. Okay, so fifth is just a white box and the graph is just like this. So I hope you understood how the histogram works and that's pretty much it for this video. I'll see you guys in my next video. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. <laughs> you knew that I was playing a prank because the video slider just didn't go till the end. How could I end without explaining how the histogram works? Okay, in real life. This was all practical shit. I just hope I'm supposed to say that word. Okay, let's move on to something practical. How would you use histogram? How would real histograms look? Now here's the thing. I just showed it with 100 pixels. In real life, with real images, you'll have more than 100 pixels, of course. Some of the cameras even have 50 million pixels. The Canon 5 DSR has 50 million pixels. The Hasselblad at 6D has 100 million pixels. But come on, you'll be dealing with just 20, 24 million pixels, that's it. But still, compare this with 100. So you'll have a lot more pixels and the graph, since there are a million pixels, will be a lot more smooth. So let's look into what it would look like practically. 
Now before learning how to use a histogram, it's equally essential to know how a histogram looks in the first place with practical images, not like those creepy drawings. Okay, so <laughs> have, a, have a look at this image. Now how do we open up the histogram in Photoshop? We would go to Windows, then Histogram. Look at the histogram. The histogram tends towards the left hand side. Why? Because it has a lot of dark pixels and very few white pixels, very few bright pixels. So on the right hand side you see almost no pixels, but there are pixels, you know that. Now look at this image. See the histogram? It's leaning towards the right. Why? Because there are a lot of white pixels. So that's how a histogram looks. Now let's move into more practical images that I have clicked so that you can relate with it. These are stock photos, okay? So let's jump into Lightroom. So this is one of the images that I clicked recently in one of my street photo walks. So let's look at this image. Now I have already did a little bit of setting right here and there so let's reset that but before resetting it if I reset it all my hard work will be gone I don't want to do that so just a tip here in Lightroom so if you want to save a particular adjustment that you have made what do you have to do you have to click the plus button near the snapshot if you are in the, in the develop in the in the develop module and just pop it out you see this snapshot bar? There's a small plus button right here. Just click on the plus button and save it as OK. Monday. Today's not Monday, is it? Monday edit. Just save it. Whatever name you might want to keep. OK. Now, even if you just reset anything. OK, just let me just reset the tone. Let me just reset everything. And if you click on Monday edit, it becomes like Monday edit. All right. So let's reset the tone and let me show you what exactly it means now look at the histogram let me just reset the regions also look at the histogram the graph tends towards the left which means there are a lot of black pixels and it does not touch the right end now here's the thing when you're working with histogram in Lightroom or Photoshop you need to make sure that the histogram doesn't touch the left end or the right end now get ready for an important tip and lesson here. Human eye has a certain range of light that it can see. There is a limit to a level of darkness that a human eye can see. Beyond that limit, human eye sees nothing but black. Beyond a certain limit of brightness, human eye cannot see. Because beyond that limit, all we see is white. So there is a range of light that our eyes can see and that range is fixed okay the same range applies to a monitor a screen a screen can also show a range of light beyond a certain level of brightness a screen cannot represent or beyond a certain level of darkness a screen cannot represent if an image shows you the light the range of light beyond that level the screen will show white or complete black, no details. Now, same goes for print. A printed paper cannot show beyond a particular range. It also has a range. Similarly, look at the histogram. What does the left and right side of the histogram represent? It is nothing but the limits. The limit that a screen can represent. The limit that an eye can see, usually that a screen can represent. Now, a camera can see more. 14 stops. Some of the Nikon cameras have 14 stops. So, a camera and our eyes can see 7, 8 stops, okay? So that's a completely different thing. All you have to know that a camera sees more. The range of light that a camera can capture is much more than a human eye can see and that a screen can represent, provided that you're capturing images in RAW format. Now, when you open your images in Lightroom and if you see the graph leaning towards the left, which means that there are pixels on the left of this, this side, there are pixels beyond that certain limit. By editing, you need to bring all those pixels inside that limit. So as you can see, a lot of pixels are beyond the limit of the left hand side 
that they are so dark that no details can be seen, we need to bring those pixels over. How do we do that? We increase the black levels, see? Or we increase the shadows and it comes towards the right. Now one of the tips here I wanted to give you that Lightroom can automatically set black levels or white levels. All you have to do, press and hold shift, just double click on the blacks and it will set the perfect black level. See? Automatically it does that. Now the left side, watch carefully, it doesn't touch, it just stops at the left end. Now here's the thing, there's another way you can see which pixels are beyond that particular range. To see that, just let's reset that and press J. See the areas painted in blue? The pixels in these areas are beyond the limit of the left hand side. Now if I make it too bright, you will see red areas. Similarly, the pixels in these areas are beyond the limit of the right hand side. Press J again to remove all those. So the crux of the story is, you need to make sure that all your pixels are in the safe area of the limits in Instagram. So that's finally pretty much it for this video. I hope you understood what I was talking about and I hope it helped. And if it did, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button if you liked the video. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and just make sure, please make sure that you keep creating. Before learning how to use an histogram, it's very essential. I need to shoot the birds again. Matter is never lost nor conserved. Was that statement right? Just, just forget that I said that. Okay, energy has... Forget that.